connecting to cloud server. Oh, and it's recording. All right, great. So let me put back the screen share. Okay. All right, welcome to Perfect Love Worship Center's Wednesday night Bible study for um, March the 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. If you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> St. Saint, Saint Patty. St. Patty, yes. And St. <laughs> With and our, no Patty. <laughs> and our St. Patty's not here. Uh, right. much, but uh, we, our, our prayers are with her. And uh, we, we wish her a, a good trip and a safe return. And um, we're just going to get started uh, with the uh, Bible study. Um, before we do so, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless us as we uh, visit. Okay. Okay, that's somebody, Melissa just texted me. Okay, she's able, she should be able to get on soon. All right, let's pray. Precious Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you and uh, we glorify you for this opportunity once again to delve into your word, your word that is so uh, wonderful, so fulfilling, so life changing and affirming, Lord God. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, book of James that you've given to us, you inspired your servant James to write has such uh, practical uh, righteousness throughout its pages and in each verse, Lord God, that it would take a lifetime to plumb the depths of its truth, Lord. As, and we pray, Lord God, as we attempt to uh, study uh, the truths out here and uh, together, uh, that your Holy Spirit will continue to lead us and guide us into all truth. Just as we prayed earlier before this, we pray, God, that you would lead us to truth and allow your truth to settle in our hearts and let us be willing to receive your truth with joy and with gladness, Lord God. We thank you and praise you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, okay. I have to let Sister Nicole back in. Something happened. All right. So I'm going to be uh, teaching the lesson while hosting. So bear with me. I don't want to let I don't want to ignore anybody's request to come in or anything like that. And I have to also do the um, presentation. OK, here we go. So we're, as you know, we are uh, studying the book of James. And um, apparently this is lesson 14. I think Sister Patty did update that for tonight's lesson. So uh, we are going to go into the book of James, chapter three. Uh, and we're going to be reading verses uh, 13 through, it should be 17. I, I added an extra verse there inadvertently. That's okay. More of the word of God is fine. <laughs> I'm going to read this, uh, this uh, first um, uh, text. Who is wise? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. So James is calling out those who uh, want to or are seeking out uh, respect from other people. Um, they're wanting to have human or social um, uh, success. They want to be seen and heard. They want to have the limelight on them. They want people to uh, think of them as wise and as um, holy and all this. Um, you know, that, 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 is, that can be a temptation for many people in the church. Uh, the desire to you know why and why is he on the platform and and speaking and not me i i have i have a revelation god has given me 
revelation and people should be listening to me. You know, this is a very sensitive issue because there are people who have received revelation from the Lord and uh, they, they do have a, a good message to deliver, but there are also um, people within the church who have, who are not uh, wanting to push forward the kingdom of God. They're trying to push forward their own kingdom mm -hmm. using the church and trying to um, sow division in the church. This, this has happened throughout history. Uh, and Jesus even talked about it when he, when he talked about the field of grain where uh, among the, the, the good grain uh, grew um, chaff. And uh, uh, this chaff looks like wheat. It looks good. It looks like it's right, you know, and it, it, but, but it, there's nothing in it. And it, and it can only, uh, it, it doesn't provide the kind of nutrients and the sustenance that the wheat would provide. But God tells the the harvesters, you know, the, the or the or the the farmer, don't get rid of the chaff because you might get rid of the the wheat among that uh, while it's growing. But wait until it's time to harvest, and then when the early in the day, in the early days, they would take the the bunches of of, of wheat and they throw it up in the air. And the, the wheat would come back down because it has more substance and it's heavier, but the chaff would blow away in the wind. And so that's how they got rid of the false wheat so that when they harvest everything and they brought it in to be milled, um, they weren't just milling empty uh, bits of chaff, but they were, uh, it was only the good fruit of the earth that they were really wanting to get. And the same thing is, for us in the church, there, there are many among us who uh, would like to have the spotlight, would like to be heard by other people and have their own following. And this is something that we have to be careful of. Um, so why are the religious such hypocrites? <laughs> That, that, that's what people ask, you know, people who, who have been to churches, who have um, uh, or have some sort of a, 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 an experience with religion. There's a lot of people out there, and I've, I'm sure you've heard, of, heard them as well, complain that they don't go to church because they're all full of hypocrites. People who are spouting uh, religiosity and and uh, their own wisdom or, or what seems to be the wisdom of God, but they don't actually show forth the truth that they are supposedly trying to impart to other people. And we have to be careful. We have to be so careful about how we represent the gospel, uh, not only to one another, but to this world. Mm -hmm. Lots of folks think they have it all figured out. They want people to look to them for the answers. Um, but James has a simple test of their wisdom. If they are truly operating in the spirit, they will not try to lord their spirituality over others. Who wants to read 1 John 4 and 20? Um, I'll read it. Okay, go ahead. If a man says, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Amen. Amen. So, you know, somebody can say something on one hand, but their actions have to complement whatever they are boasting of in themselves. Uh, somebody can come up to me and say, I love you. But if they start to do things that offend me, say things that offend me or do things that hurt me, then I, I know that what they're saying is not true. It's not what's really in their heart. And that's how James uh, lets us know how to look out for false doctrine, for false um, prophets, 
for false wise men. During the time of uh, the first century church, uh, I believe I, I, I said this before, but um, the, the, the world of that time, the Roman Empire, even though it was Roman, the, it was still very Hellenic, very Greek, because um, much of the empire had been uh, conquered by Alexander the Great. And in Greek culture, philosophy was, was very prized and was very, um, those who were philosophical philosophers were, were uh, considered um, very, uh, they were respected. And even the Romans had uh, respect for the philosophical uh, understandings of the, of the Greek uh, philosophers. And there were many pseudo philosophers or people who wanted to be, who wanted to get that limelight themselves that would uh, go onto the streets and, and, and try to gather uh, sort of followers for themselves, groupies for their, for their particular brand of philosophy. And you know, one of these philosophers uh, named Justin Martyr uh, became uh, a Christian, or so he claimed, after he, he met a, uh, a man in uh, Judea when he was visiting there who imparted to him the gospel. Uh, Justin Martyr had been a uh, aspiring philosopher. And uh, in those days, uh, philosophers had particular robes that they wore to kind of identify them as philosophers so that they could be sort of like a, a priest, a Catholic priest would have a habit on or a collar to identify you know, who he was. And um, Justin Martyr um, came up with a kind of philosophy that, that brought Christianity into his brand of philosophy. And he came up with this idea of, you know, the logos, which was a Greek idea of, a, of, of something beyond men that cannot touch men, but, got, but somehow Jesus became uh, the, uh, the embodiment of this logos. And he's considered, he, he is considered to have laid the foundations uh, the first ideas for the doctrine of the Trinity. And uh, unfortunately, he, even though he claimed to be a Christian, he never, he never took off his, his uh, philosopher's robes. He, he, he continued to teach uh, Christianity or his brand of Christianity from his philosopher's robes. There hmm. was, so, so there was no real change in his, um, and who, how he, acted or how he uh, presented himself. Uh, the only change was that he, he had found so, uh, a particular uh, niche that he could sort of uh, add into his philosophy that uh, he hoped would uh, make him the next great, you know, Socrates or Plato or something like that. But even, hmm. even uh, Christian theologians and philosophers um, uh, looked down upon on his particular brand of philosophy, and it was it was not very well thought out, and it was not very compelling. But he he became what was known as a, as an apologist. He sent letters uh, to the to the emperor of Rome to uh, try to persuade him that Christianity uh, was uh, very philosophically sound. But the problem is, you can't add. Uh, pagan philosophy or pagan ideas onto uh, the truth, onto the, 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 the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and the whole of the Old Testament um, because it, 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 it corrupts it. But that, that's, that's something that we need to be careful of because Justin Martyr is considered, you know, one of the founding fathers or one of the, the church fathers and uh, he, he's considered someone that that should we should you know study and 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 you know prove of his of what he was trying to do, and I I, I disagree wholeheartedly with that. I don't believe that he had uh, the truth, but he simply was used uh, by the enemy to uh, confuse people huh. and to sow division within God's true church. Hmm. True wisdom from God leads one to act and talk with humility and meekness. When we have true wisdom from God, we will uh, demonstrate it with humility and meekness. 
because what God imparts to us that it, his holy truth and his righteousness, it convicts us and it causes us to recognize that we need to put ourselves under his uh, sovereignty and his authority. We, and, and, and it totally negates any uh, attempt to try to engrandize ourselves. Anyone who tries to make themselves to be someone or something greater or um, equal to the message that he is supposedly trying to you know, send out um, mm -hmm. is automatically should be automatically um, canceled out in our in our minds because that is not the fruit of God's righteousness or wisdom. That is the fruit of carnality that is trying to utilize and hijack the truth in order to lift one's self up. Amen. Oh, oh, well, hold on. Let me go back. Okay. Who wants to read Psalm 1914? I, I okay, can I'll read. Oh, go. Um, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. King David had it right. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. He connected the words of his mouth with the meditation of his heart. Meditation is not what in Christianity is different from the Eastern religions of this world. In the Eastern religions, meditation meant emptying yourself and uh, you know coming out of yourself which is very dangerous because what that does is that opens you up to evil spirits. What David is talking about here is the continual consideration and uh, pondering of the, the law of God and his righteousness and his truth, uh, pouring over the word of God so that one can receive as much truth from it and, and as much um, meat from it as possible and so he's saying let let the words of my mouth and the meditate what i what i think about what i ponder in my heart and how, what i speak from my mouth let them be acceptable in your sight O oh lord because if what i say and what i think is uh not completely under your authority god if it, if i am not uh, humbling myself before you and submitting submitting myself to you, then I am not yours. I have become my own uh, God. I've become my own person. And he, he, he praises the Lord, says, oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I cannot do anything without you, and I would not be anyone without you. You know, anyone who tries to show off their spirituality and try to tell you that there's someone you know, something else and that they, you know, that they, they have it all together. They're not, I, I, they're not, you know, praising the Lord and, and giving God the acknowledgement that he deserves. They are making it seem and sound like they are the ones that, that their own, they're their own strength and they're their own redeemer. And the Bible is very clear. Um, you know, anyone who, who thinks that uh, there is no God is a fool. And, and anyone who tries to put themselves in place of God is a uh, is rebellious, and and God hates rebellion. It's like the sin of witchcraft to Him. When we are truly wise and spiritual in the Holy Ghost, we will not care what others think of us. All we want to do is be acceptable to God. So, when we are receiving the wisdom of God and we are uh, applying it to our hearts it becomes less and less important to us what other people think of us uh, and more important what God thinks of us because we will develop automatically a deep and abiding intimate relationship with God that will cause us to change 
who we are and how we act and, and what we say. There, there, there is palpable evidence of God's word blessing us and, and changing us and keeping us under his sub, un, sub, into submission to him. So we're going to read James 3.17 again. Who wants to read that portion of our text? All right, all right. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Amen. You can tell when someone is all talk and no substance. Their actions and their words reveal a heart that is carnal and demonic. I know we don't like to say that. It seems very harsh. But folks, anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God is of the devil. It is demonic. And people open themselves up to Satan's lies and purposes all the time when, when they move themselves out from underneath the umbrella of God's and Jesus's mercy and grace. And they try to put onto themselves that mantle of, of wisdom and that mantle of, of righteousness. They go back under the law of Moses and they uh, become uh, susceptible to the punishment of any of breaking any of the laws of Moses, which is death. Mm -hmm. And they are being deceived by the enemy and the enemy is using them to try to deceive other sheep from yeah. the, uh, from the mercy and the grace of, of Jesus Christ. You know, Paul had to deal with this uh, early on in his ministry when the church at Galatia uh, in modern day Turkey, one of the, the first churches or first areas which he evangelized and, and started a church as soon after he had left that area and moved on to evangelize other areas, um, people that he called or that the historians called Judaizers came in. They were Jews who went in amongst the, the, the sheep, the new sheep. And said, well, what, we, you know, we, we are Christians too. And what Paul has taught you is true. But uh, we have a, a, a greater understanding. And we recognize that on top of accepting the blood of Jesus Christ for your sins and receiving his forgiveness, you need to follow after the dietary, the Jewish dietary laws. You need to, you need to circumcise your men. And all these Jew, they piled on all these Jewish traditions and we have the book of galatians which is many historians believe that this is uh paul's first epistle to any of the churches where he um begins the book very stridently and harshly saying how how could you galatians have fallen for this for this lie for this deceit and he said if if i or any angel of light were to come to you with anything different than what I first taught you, let him be accursed. And so we know that, that Satan comes as, a, as an angel of light. He comes as a, uh, a pleasant um, sounding and pleasant looking um, sort of mentor, teacher, guide, but it's really a, it's evil, satanic, demonic spirit that is behind that and we need to be careful of that we need to recognize that actions speak louder than words and 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 we have been given a good wonderful test here that that James is is, is providing us to try to separate people the 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 black sheep the wolves that have come in sheep's clothing from the real sheep and that is, watch what they do, how they act. If, if, if their actions do not match or link up with what they're speaking or talking to you about, then you need to disregard them. You need to put them away, put them aside. Don't let them anywhere near you or anyone, anywhere near um, family members or anyone else. They need to be put aside. Um, 
in some churches, they actually shun <laughs> or excommunicate anyone that they feel is um, sowing division in, the, in their ranks. We, we desire that, that all should come to the knowledge of, of Christ. And we don't, we don't, we try not to, you know, kick people out of our churches or uh, out of our communities. But there, there are times when uh, people have to, some people who are sowing false doctrine and devilish um, theologies and wisdom, they need to be separated and, and taken aside and, 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 and with the hope that they will come to repentance and be restored. Every Christian needs to work to avoid strife and contention in their life. Um, Sister um, Nicole and Sister Alma, we were talking about this earlier, about how there's so much contention and it, 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 so many people giving in to um, allowing uh, divisions in, in their in, in how they believe about certain things. You mentioned politics, and there's also other uh, you know doctrinal issues and things like that, tertiary issues that. Um, people uh, can get so caught up with in the church, brother against brother, sister against sister, strifes and, and backbitings and, and, and contentions that are not uh, exemplary of what the, the example that Christ showed us and gave to us in his ministry. He never got caught up in political contention. He never got caught up in religious uh, uh, bickering. He stayed true to his message. He acted out his message in love for all people. And the enemy, what he wants to do, he tries to, he tries to bring drama into our lives. And he tries to bring contention and uh, strife that produces, that doesn't produce holiness. It doesn't produce righteousness but it only produces confusion and sin. And it only reveals what's the pride that's going on in people's hearts. If you're, if, if you're the kind of person that you just, you just have to speak your mind, uh, no matter what, how people around you feel or, or believe, then, then you're not really walking in the wisdom of God. You, you're, you're a living um, opportunity for Satan to use as a weapon against the church. And, and he will use, he will use you, whether you, you know, like it or not, whether you think that you're being used or not. Um, he'll, he'll deceive you into believing that you're, that you're right. And everybody else is wrong. And you have every right to speak your mind and tell everybody off and blah, blah, blah. You know, and, the, and, and that, that's the kind of action that, indicates what's going on in your heart. It's not truth. It's not righteousness. It's not the, the Holy Spirit. It's something else. It, it's your own carnal flesh. It's your own pride. We should not be receiving counsel from people like this. Let me say that again. We should not be receiving counsel from people who we see are not acting out what they are supposedly uh, speaking. Amen. We need to be careful about people who are like this, because if we allow them to have access to us and to counsel us, they will sow hurt and confusion in our lives. So many people have been, uh, have been turned away from the truth because Satan has gotten into the heart of one or more people and made them seem to be very wise, very uh, learned, very um, uh, 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 spiritual, so to speak, that people who are not as spiritual or understanding or as, um, you know, uh, were not wise, latched on to their message and latched on to their, their, what they were trying to say and their, and their divisive language and their contention and were pulled away from the truth. We, we, we should not allow this to happen, folks. We should, we should be very vigilant. We need to be very careful about who we allow to speak to us and tell us 
their ideas and their wisdom. Mm -hmm. The wisdom that God gives us is gentle and peaceable. It receives correction with gladness. Folks, if somebody seems wise amongst you, amongst you and the pastor or the leadership um, tries to correct them and their response is to be angry and to backbite and to, um, you know, become uh, bitter, that, that person should be avoided at all costs. That is not coming from wisdom that is from God. If someone comes to you and they tell you, you know, you need to be a little more careful of what you say and, and the, you need to be learn, you need to learn a little bit more about what you're talking about before you try to indoctrinate other people. And you receive that with gladness and you say, thank you. Thank you for helping me, you know, teach me, help me to understand this better. Then that means that the wisdom that that person has or the wisdom that you have is from God because you're showing forth an action that is commensurate with what you are speaking. Oop. Let me let Kathy in. Who wants, um, actions speak louder than words. I thought this was cute too. <laughs> I should have been going through all those while I was talking. Sorry, that's, I'm not a very, uh, very good at uh, multitasking. <laughs> Who wants to read Proverbs 11 and 2? Okay, I'll read it. Go ahead, Sister Alma. Pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble, it's wisdom. Amen. And that's, that's it right there, folks. It, it's self-explanatory. When, the, when there is pride in play, then comes disgrace and shame. Because your sin... The Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. You know, if you're operating in pride, you better start becoming uh, introspective and willing to search your heart and even ask the Lord to search your heart to see if there be any wicked way in you. Because you, if you continue in your pride, you continue in that, that um, self-centeredness, you are bound for a great disgrace and a great fall. But with the humble is wisdom. If someone around you seems to be um, quiet and they, they have a, a quiet dignity or they, they, uh, they seem to uh, exude a, a certain um, spirit of humility, um, glom on to those people. Um, talk to those people and, and, uh, and allow the Lord to teach you through those people. If you desire to be wise and have godly wisdom, then be willing to be humble, be willing to be meek and lowly of spirit, because that is where your wisdom will be seen by others and others will be attracted to what you, uh, how you live your life and what you have to say. And, and those are the kind of teachers that we need to uh, bring close to ourselves and we need to be listening to. Um, we don't want to have to, ha we don't want to have teachers you know, that have itching ears that, 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 that uh, want to scratch our itching ears and tell us what we want to hear, you know, mm -hmm. because that, that's going to lead us to, you know, lead us down that, that LIE, the lie, where <laughs> the end of it is, is a great big cliff and it's, it's disgrace and, and, and destruction. So no matter how spiritual a person seems to be, their actions will always reveal what sort of wisdom they are offering you. If someone needs to hear us ins insisting that, or if someone comes to us insisting that we need to hear their message or their wisdom, and you can easily spot to see that they are really sent by God or not. You can, you can spot by their actions, you know, how, how they dress, you know, what kind of, you know, car they drive, you know, it, it, the kind of people that they that they associate with all these things are are sure signs that will reveal what is really going on in their hearts mm -hmm. who wants to read matthew seven twenty? i would read but i'm driving oh that's okay no problem sister kathy god bless you <laughs> <laughs> god bless you all <laughs> anyone else wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them 
Amen. That's Jesus Christ speaking to the people. You know, he said there's going to be many people who are kind of going to come and, you know, on, to the judgment throne. And they're going to say, Jesus, we did all kinds of works in your name. We did all kinds of healings in your name. We had mega churches. We had so many people following after us. And, and we, we did all these things in your name. And Jesus is going to look at them and say, depart from me. I never knew you, thou worker of iniquity. Folks, there's, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be shocked when they, when they get to the throne room. And, they're, and, 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 and what is true is going to be revealed before them. And we have to be careful that we're not associating with or we're not giving into the temptation to be like the people who sport a type of wisdom that tries to draw respect from people to themselves without acknowledging God in all their ways. I mean, that's that's what, you know, Proverbs 3, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Anyone who is acknowledging God and all that they do, and they are following after his word, glom onto them. Seek those people out. Reject those who uh, try to make something of themselves in other people's eyes. They, what they are trying to offer you is uh, selfish, it is prideful, and it is of the devil. So we, we must take the warning and heed the warning of James tonight and throughout our our lives because um if we are deceived like like eve that one deception changed the whole course of history and i'm not saying that that anything that we do that you know if we fall away that the whole course of history is going to be changed but your life your 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 salvation rests on your ability to discern and to be aware of and 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 uh understanding of the fact that no matter what somebody tells you, if their actions do not line up with what they're trying to teach you, then they need to be rejected. All right. Brother Alex, is there a significance with all the rotting fruits? You know, I <laughs> noticed that um, there's some are they all rotting or? or yeah. Uh, yeah, they look like they're all right. And that flower seems to be fading right. pretty quickly. Um, I guess. I think what the, the, the whoever put this uh, picture, this this meme together, was saying, "Look, you know, you can tell when a banana is not good anymore. Okay. When, when it's rotten, it's got this ugly brown coloring, and these other fruits the, I, look maybe like apples. They're starting to have, you know, they got indentations, they and they're 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 browning on on most of their sides, and the, the, there's not much there that that." You, you should move on to something fresh or something something that's that's ripe and 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 that'll give you more sustenance um, it makes me think like that's when the what's on the inside is starting to show on the outside exactly the <laughs> that's a very that i like that observation this is yeah absolutely whatever's going on in the inside is showing <laughs> on the outside and it's always going to show I look at that banana and say, well, it's ready for banana bread. Maybe it just needs the right perspective to help them yeah. get to exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, let's let's pray and ask the Lord to 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 bless us. Thank him for the word and for his instruction tonight and ask him to bless us as we go our separate ways this evening. Precious Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you have given to us leadership and uh, ministers who are uh, given the wisdom of God and are showing forth uh, a meek and mild and hum humble spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be uh, attracted to them more than those who are seem to be the loudest and seem to have an attractive message but are not following through on the actions of that message, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to be wise. Help us to be discerning and help us to always seek the truth, no matter how 
uh, it, it might affect us, no matter how difficult it may seem to accept uh, the truth must be the first and foremost in our hearts and in our uh, uh, lives, Lord God. And we thank you and praise you for all that you are doing through the outreach, Lord God. Help us all to be uh, wise ministers of the gospel, not seeking our own uh, way or trying to be uh, known of other people in our in our own power, but to seek after your uh, uh, acknowledgement and your approval and your grace, Lord God, where you lift us up and you provide us with the opportunity to uh, impart truth to those around us in a way that is proper and full of glory and, and truth and humility. We thank you and praise you, Lord God. Be with us. Uh, bless us as we separate uh, from the Zoom meeting and bring us back together again soon on Sunday to be able to worship together once again in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise All God. Right. Amen. Praise God. So I think I should stop um, recording. Um, I'll stop recording here. There we go. Okay.